Okay, I want to um, take a minute to go over how we could use PowerPoint um, to do some simple CAD drawings. Um, very simple to do. So I just want to take a minute to show in a video, maybe uh, just to help give you guys some ideas if you haven't done this before. The um, might make a second video that will show you how to do it in Google Slides. So this first one will be PowerPoint. So to start out, I gave you a, I kind of spotted you a, a template that you can use uh, for this project. So the PowerPoint is, uh, oh, the template's open right now. And um, I got a few pages already created in here. So you can easily copy and paste or do a duplicate slide at any point and you don't have to, you don't have to recreate um, you know, the wheel every time. So for instance, if you wanted to uh, duplicate this slide, if I right click on it over here in the um, kind of in the, um, in, the, in the tree off to the left, I can right click and I can say duplicate slide and then I'll get a complete duplicate of that, which I can um, work with. This is a good idea to do that. Perhaps if you don't wanna um, uh, mess up the, the original, you can always duplicate it, make your changes and if for any reason you make a mistake and you can um, go back to the original. If you wanna delete a slide, I can right click and say delete. So this first page is the title title slide. Like, like I requested a title slide in the project. And this would simply be just a um, uh, kind of a name for your drawing package. And then of course a place to put your name. Second slide was our uh, symbol library. So uh, a lot of drawing packages offer a symbol library usually at the beginning and they will give you like, uh, you know, be pictures of all the various symbols that might be used and define what they are. Um, the idea of symbols are to try to be somewhat, um, you know, consistent. You know, we talked about the ISA 5.1 standards um, and trying to keep things consistent, but some people don't, follow those standards or some people do their own thing. Um, so it's always good to kind of define the symbols that you're going to use in your, in your uh, drawing package. So in this case, I'm spotting you several pre-made symbols. So you don't have to go out and build them. I built each and every one of these symbols purely by hand, by either drawing, um, you know, the little lines or a circle or a triangle and kind of grouping these little things together. So to make a valve, I just basically took, drew a small triangle and then I duplicated it and then I kind of flipped it around and then kind of set them up point to point and then I just grouped it as a as an object um, and I can show you that on a blank slide here in a minute um, so all of these items are grouped together so if I were to ungroup this guy you'll see that it's nothing more than a, a square a line and then uh, two triangles. I'm gonna go ahead and regroup. So anytime you put the things together and you wanna kind of keep it as like one kind of entity, uh, you just right click on, you can multi multiple select all the items you want, right click and say group. Um, I can also change the letter here. I don't have to ungroup it if I wanna change the letter. I could just go in there and um, highlight it and then I can rewrite over it the uh, the letter. So I'm going to go back to S since it's a uh, solenoid valve. Same applies for our instrument sensors uh, uh, circle. I can just kind of click in here and I can change that to TT for temperature transmitter. And then I can change my numbers uh, from zero to zero to whatever, zero one, zero two, whatever the instrument number is. Okay. Um, and then same thing goes for all of our electrical symbols. I've got some contacts and some switch contacts and some relays, uh, relay solenoid and a pilot light and a horn. All right. Third page is the build material. So we talked about uh, the, you know, it's a nice thing to define all the parts that you're using. And typically you're going to give it a, uh, an item number, a, uh, which is a unique number that you can refer to in the drawing. Um, you can give it a catalog number. So like when we built our paddle level switch, we came up with a, with a, uh, with a catalog number that was fairly lengthy. You could type that here, the manufacturer. So for that uh, paddle level switch, we use Dwyer. So you'd put Dwyer. You could put a description here. So you could say that it's a paddle level switch uh, with a you know 120 volt AC, whatever, whatever options, if you can fit that in there. 
And then another kind of a cool idea is to, you know, if you can, is to, to define a cross-reference. So everywhere you know that that's being used in a drawing, put it here. So we have this um, kind of this index on the side and top of the drawing. So we have like this matrix, uh, like A, you know, like a A1, B2, C3. So if you kind of know about the quadrant uh, or the little square where that object might land, then you can say, okay, it's on page two of the drawing package and it's in quadrant C5. And you can define that right here. It just helps you, if you're troubleshooting, locate where that thing might actually be, especially if it's a very lengthy drawing package. All right, so our next page is a sample P and ID uh, diagram. And I pretty much, you know, again, kind of spotted you pretty, pretty well, kind of a, uh, kind of a good good starting point, right? So I, I've got my um, my solid black line, which would indicate piping, or in our case, a conveyor. And we're going to mark it, you know, kind of where it's coming, like where the coffee beans are coming from, right? So the process, the process will start flowing from here and come into the hopper and flow out to the roaster. So we kind of indicate this is our starting point. We're coming from the green coffee bean intake. We're going to go through this solenoid valve, which has its own label, as well as a electrical connection to the LS, which is the level switch, which is tied to this um, pre-roast storage hopper. And then we have another valve, which I didn't show as a solenoid valve, I just showed as a valve here, or a gate uh, and going out to the roaster. So what if we wanted to add a second transmitter or a switch, I should say, to this um, hopper. So in this case, I could do one of two things. I can go back to my symbol library and I can copy my symbol. I'm just gonna right click and I'm saying copy. And then I come back to my page here and I'll say uh, paste. And now I've pasted that to the page. And I kinda just drag it to get it in position. And if you wanna Try to get things that lined up neatly. You see there in PowerPoint, I get those little red kind of lines and that kind of shows me when things are, are kind of in alignment with each other. So it's a great little way to, to, to see if you're, you know, somewhat in, in alignment with other objects above it or below it. Um, and then if I want to draw a line from here to the hopper, I would come up here to um, insert, or I can also go right here to shapes. And then you'll see, I got all my shapes um, available to me. I will choose line and then I'll just basically draw a line between the, the instrument circle and the hopper. Now, if I were to zoom in on this, another thing you do is also zoom in to get a little bit better and get more precise. You'll see that this line kind of defaults to blue for some reason. And so up here, shape outline was shown as blue. So I could come up here and change that to be black. Also, uh, we talked about the electrical being a dashed line. If I wanted to change the properties of this line, I can go come back here to shape outline, click on that arrow downward. I can change its weight, meaning you know how bold do I want this line to be. And I can change if it's gonna be dashed or solid. Okay. In this case, we would show the solid connection And then we'd have a dashed line perhaps going off to whatever we're gonna control. And then like we said, we would want to do a change this to L S and uh, since we already have LS01, then this would probably be LS02. Of course, another option available would have been to just simply, I'm gonna cut this, would have been to just simply kind of select these two things, right click and say, copy and paste. So I'll copy it and then I'll do a control V and I'll paste it. And then you can see I got an exact copy of that. And then I would just, of course, change that to LSO2. And if I wanted to draw, um, a kind of a uh, kind of a, a line. It's, it's in this case where we have a, a ninety degree um, turn on it. Well, that would just basically be drawing two lines. So I'll have like one line coming down, and then I'd have a second line 
coming across. And then I would uh, essentially need to uh, change the colors and change these to be dashed. Now I could have also have done this um, right here as well. Uh, I was going to say, I could also have selected these two lines at the same time and, um, and done this edit actually all at once. But I, I went ahead and did them as separate. Okay. So now I just created that uh, duplicate it or by doing copy paste and doing some simple text edits. So that's one advantage of have, having the symbol library pre-built. You can just take from the symbol library and then uh, easily deploy those objects on your drawings. Now, let's say I wanted to have a second P and ID diagram page. I could again, right click over here on the page and say duplicate page. And now I've got the P and ID diagram duplicated. So I could continue to use these symbols and maybe draw a wholly different, totally different piece of the process right here, such as maybe the roaster. And the last thing we have is our electrical diagram. So again, I kind of spotted you the, the rails and some simple logic for uh, what could be a, in a, a relay control situation. So um, here again, I, I went back to my symbol library. I pulled up my uh, my contacts, my float switch contact or my um, level switch contact, I should say, and my uh, just a, a good old normally open contact and then a coil. And I just drew lines from here to here and drew a line from here to here. And then again, just draw lines with the line tool up here to, to just kind of connect these things. So you can definitely spend a lot of time it could be very tedious to get these lines and you know get everything kind of lined up uh precisely um so if it's not perfectly lined up it's okay we're not we're not gonna um it's not a matter of seeing how um how ocd you are and getting all this stuff perfect it's just gonna be a matter of you know just again getting some experience with the um, using kind of the digital way to kind of draw some circuits, um, you know, with, with, with PowerPoint. Um, and also you might have some situations where the line might kind of go over into the circle a little bit and that's fine too. If you can't get it precise, um, that's no problem. And then lastly, I did give you a blank page. So just a, a plain blank canvas in this kind of package. So this plain, plain blank page can be used, of course, to build anything you want on here. Uh, you can print this out, and, and if you had to, just go ahead and do it by hand, and you can use the blank to go by hand. Um, one other thing to note on each of these drawings as well is that the title block at the bottom of each page is also kind of filled out with some just basic content, uh, some starter some starter content for you to to, to come down here and change. So every one of these pages, you'd want to go ahead and create a, a particular title. So for instance, you might call this one uh, pre-roast store chopper P and ID diagram, right? Because we know it refers to the pre-roast store chopper. You'd put the date that you made the drawing. You'd put any kind of drawing number, which, you know, again, could just be a sequential number, um, starting with page one being 001 and, and throughout. And then it's a it's good habit to, to to identify a particular revision. Uh, the revision could also be a date or you could just put, you know, Rev 1, Rev 2, Rev 3, or Rev A, B, C, whatever um, convention you decide to choose there. And just to allow us to know that, um, again, you you could have a older revision drawing um, that you're referencing. And then perhaps the engineer or the manufacturer would say, you we need you to reference drawing number, you know, one, two, three, and rev three to make sure that they're, you're looking at the exact same drawing that they're looking at. All right. So that's kind of the basics of using PowerPoint. Um, of course, when you're done with this, you want to, um, you know, save it. And if you want to submit it as a PDF, if you have, a, you know, that uh, PowerPoint, you can go save as PDF. And this will actually save this complete document as a PDF file, which I can, uh, which you can easily email to me. 
Uh, PowerPoint is acceptable as well, of course, um, but PDF is nice because perhaps not everybody is going to have PowerPoint available, but most people would have a PDF reader available to them. All right, so this is a, uh, would show up in a second, the uh, PowerPoint, the PDF version of it. All right, and here it is. Okay, um, so that's it. Uh, like I said, I might do a second video that shows you how to use Google Slides. Google Slides and PowerPoint are essentially identical in how they work and operate. All the right clicking and all the drawing tools are very similar, but I could easily show you um, show you what that looks like as well in a video.